I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Tyrone's Paul Donaghy as AIB launched their sponsorship of the 2021 GA All-Ireland Senior Football Championships. Um, AIB celebrating a return to summer football and the recognition of county rivalries nationwide at some of the hashtag toughest games of the summer. Paul, how are you doing? You well? Yeah, I'm great, Ian. How's things? How's good, going? good, yeah. I was very curious to to learn about your your football upbringing and your and your football journey to this point. Obviously, you know, you starting out with Eden Dork, then had a great county title win with Dungannon last year, first county title in 64 years. Can you just talk about like your upbringing as a footballer and where you got your grow for the game? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, just always growing up, uh, loved playing football. It was just, it, it, it was all I really wanted to do growing up and uh, obviously starting off in dark and then uh, went to Dungannon last year, sort of would have lived in Yan and uh, just uh, had always wanted to be there. Most of my friends were from there, so uh, I joined up with them and uh, just went on then. And we, we happened to have a really good season. We won the championship and just from then was able to go. Uh, Fergal and Brian asked me up to play for Tyrone there in the winter of this year and just sort of that's, that's where I'm at now. Mm. And and transfers, I've, I've done a club transfer myself over the years, albeit from Tipperary up to Dublin. It, was it, is it an awkward one doing it or is it just one of those things that was always kind of like natural, it was always going that way for you? Yeah, well, look, it was something uh, just living in the town and uh, having so many friends playing for Dungyan, you know, going to the primary school and stuff like that. Uh, it, it was sort of just where you always wanted to be and uh, like... Just it's it it was something I always wanted to do, and eventually just made the decision. Right now, it's time to do it, and you know it's been great so far. I've re really enjoyed playing with them, and it's going well. Yeah, and it must have been a bit of a change in focus because there's so many. Well, there's county players with Eden Dark, the likes of Darren McCurry. You know, I'm sure he's the main man. Then you go to Dungannon, and as far as I know, there aren't any county players there. So maybe did that kind of put more pressure on you, make you the focal point of the attack? What was that like? Uh, well, no, D Dungannon. Uh, pa Podrick McNulty would have played uh, with Throne for for many years there, uh, and he'd be our captain uh, at the minute, but. Uh, in in Dungan, there's a lot of Dungan would be a younger team, and they would have yeah. a lot of good players who could you never know could potentially be thrown players in the future, uh, like a lot of good under twenties and things like that. But it was just we're we're more of a young side at the minute, and yeah, uh, I I wouldn't really say that we we have a very good balanced team in Dungan, and uh, that's I think that's what makes us so good. Uh, so, can you talk to me about that run you had last year to, to win that county title? Am I right in saying you had three games that went to extra time on the way to the county final? Yeah, and then the county final went to extra time as well. Long and then it was... after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it was it was complete madness, all of those games, to be fair. It was, you know, uh, every every single one of them would uh, would have the supporters in the edge of their seats. But... Uh, no, it was difficult, and we were always the team equalising to bring it to extra time, and then just managed to find that extra gear in extra time to go and win those games, and obviously then the final going to penalties. But uh, no, it it just it's it sort of epitomises the the character and resilience within our group. You know, we just we just said we we were never going to lay down from the start to finish every game, and you know at at times it it looked like it wasn't going to go our way, but we just hung in there and. You know, glad we did. So, as as that season is going on, do you kind of, when you're getting through these tight games, is there an almost a sense of destiny when you keep getting through in such tight games after extra time? <laughs> yeah, like uh, I think uh, one one of my mates' dads, uh, Mark McKearney's dad, said to the stage, you know, uh, there's just sometimes your name's just in the cup, and I think he maybe said that after the quarterfinal, you know, just because of the way we kept coming through. But uh, no, it was. It was just, I think, every time really having to go to the well, like it just built that team spirit. You know, every game we were growing as a team, whereas other teams were maybe getting through games a bit more easily and they weren't they weren't growing together and having to fight together as much as we were, and it, it stood to us in the end. And do you, like, can you talk to me then about the final against Trillick? So it finished one twelve apiece after extra time, 8-7 on penalties. Both teams took 10 penalties each. What was the drama like? And what's your recollection of being involved in that shootout? 
Yeah, well, the game itself was it. It was a really cagey game. It was nearly it nearly felt like both teams were afraid to go and win at this stage. Like we didn't actually score until the for after the first water break. But um, no, when it when it went to penalties and extra time, and we had chances to win it in normal time and extra time, and we left them behind us. You know, it was we were thinking maybe maybe we've screwed this up. Finally, it's it's gonna all catch up with us, but. No, we came through. We came through uh, the penalties, and Kieran Barker scored. When Kieran Barker scored that final penalty, geez, like I, like the the rest of the game is all a fog. But I'll I'll never forget that exact moment. You know, like just it was madness. Everybody rushed the pitch, and that was a mm. special moment. Is it joy or a relief or which? <sighs> relief more than joy at the start, yeah, because you're thinking, you know, we've we've done so well. Like Dungannon were. Dungan were 33 to 1 odds to win the championship at the start of the year. And, you know, a lot of people were saying to us, you know, if you if you don't win it now, it'll it'll put you back a few years. If you don't win it now, you just might never get there again. So it it was relief to actually, you know, at the end of the day, now we, we have our county championship. And were there, you know, I'm sure there's there's men and women who were there 64 years beforehand when the, the previous county title was won. It probably meant a lot to people and probably tears all over the place. Yeah, it, it 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 really did. Like there's there's so so many people in the club who it really did mean so much to, and it like it is like you, you do it because you love playing and competing. But really, that that brings a, a different level of motivation to it. Whenever you could see after all those games, the the excitement starting to build for all those people. You know, you just wanted to do it more and more for them. You know, and did scoring thirty one points in four games and being a championship top scorer, do you think that was a a big reason for the call up? Or had Mickey Hart been on to you previously? I think Colin Cavanagh had said on the record before he thought he had contacted you. Uh, it was actually thirty four points. Oh, was <laughs> but, it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, Good on you. Yeah, uh, but no. Uh, no, Mickey Hart. He had. He had asked me. I think he had. He had asked me in for a trial, but he had at, at a stage. But I think it was more just, uh, you know, fill in and training games and stuff like that uh, after the championship. But uh, I don't think there was any great interest in calling me into the team. But uh, then uh, it was just whenever Fergal and Brian came in, they gave me there was a trial phase and went up to it uh, in the winter there of this year, and uh, obviously. They were happy with enough of how they did, and they 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 took me into the squad and started playing me. So just just grateful to them for giving me that opportunity. And were you surprised when things you know when you hit the ground running so well, getting that dream debut against Donegal, hitting ten points, and probably getting a lot of media attention because of it? Uh, well, like I was obviously like to score ten points, so I wouldn't have thought I was going to score ten points in my debut. You know, like any. In a game, it's it's difficult, but I guess as a forward, it's just about trying to get yourself into those opportunities and then nail nail on the scores when they're there. But uh, no, it was it really was a dream debut, and it was fantastic. And uh, as as I say, I'm just I was just really grateful that they trusted me to start that first game. You know, it 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 was my debut, and uh, but like it's 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 not. You know, it's it's been difficult to reach the same form since then, which is, you know, it's it's a it's a hard thing to take, but you just have to keep plugging away and trying to learn. You know, and is that something that you find at this level? Like, for example, I saw that there was one website did this sort of chart of all the possessions you had in place balls and all this kind of stuff. It was it's a, probably a new level of scrutiny for you. And then, is there a pressure then to to sort of get back to those levels again? Yeah, well, that's it. Like, I think actually somebody sent me that chart, and I think I seen I, I touched the ball nine times in that first game and got ten scores, which it just goes to show because like obviously free, freeze like, but uh, it just goes to show that like at that level because like Tyrone do have so many good forwards and so many good players, you know, like you're not going to touch the ball as much as you do in club games, so you really have to make it count when you get it and and try and score and be direct as well as make the right decision. So it's it's difficult and I'm I'm still I'm still only learning. I've only played a short league there and uh but as far as as far as pressure to get back to playing that well, like it's uh, uh like it's something that you should just probably be putting at the back of your mind and just trying to play naturally. 
Do, do you enjoy taking the freeze, or do, is it something that that you kind of um, stress about before games, or do you go out and it's just cool as a breeze taking them? No, well, obviously, like most free takers, I would put a lot of time and effort into it. You know, trying to trying to just pick up anything you can to make yourself better at them. Uh, no, it's something I really enjoy doing. You know, it's something I I love. Like. I don't really feel any pressure with them. Like a like a more sometimes you'll you'll score, sometimes you'll miss. You're you're always just trying to improve your percentage. But I no, I love taking free kicks. You know. When did you start taking them? And like, did you slowly develop a style, or do you, like did someone coach you, or, or how did it happen? Um. Well, no. Just to guess. Growing up, like my dad would have just showed me how to how to strike the ball. You know, just in different ways. You know, like. Would have, would have went to the field with him when I was younger and trying to improve as a footballer and uh, he would have showed me different ways and then you watch guys like Rock and O'Connor and Morris Fitzgerald, guys like that, you know, uh, striking their freeze and, and from play and you just try and take as much as you can from them. Mm. And do you, I suppose you were a young guy when when Tyrone were winning all Ireland's. Do you remember being, were you at the games or do you have any memories of them? Yeah, I think uh, I was at the 08 final. I remember sitting lower Hogan and seeing all those boys playing. Yeah, it was it 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 was magical, and you know it's gonna it's probably thrown of a lot of work to do to get back to that level. But uh, I'd say it's it's definitely not impossible. Yeah, and do you have any particular memory of that win against Kerry? Uh, yeah, I do. I actually I remember uh, like I remember all all those games in around that time. I remember. Do her doing the the big run down the sideline and things like that. I remember, like uh, at different times, I think it was maybe it was there no five two. Whenever the the uh, all of them sort of bottled up the carry boys, I think it was along the Hogan side. You'd see you'd see the clips on YouTube of it. Like it was, no, they were, those were great teams, and you've just got to hope that you could be like them some someday. You know? Did you have any particular football and heroes growing up? Hmm. Well, like obviously in Tyrone, you had your Canavans, your O'Neills, and Muggsies, Kavna, boys like that, you know. Uh, but like I don't know, my my favorite sort of would have been when my dad introduced me to Morris Fitzgerald and watching clips of him on YouTube. You know, he was sort of like he he was one of the most complete footballers there, there probably ever was. You know, it was he's he's somebody that you'd want to be like for sure. Mm. And is it his grace or what was it about Morris Fitz that you liked? His grace and just kind of there was it seemed like there was nothing that he couldn't do. You know, he kind of like he he had he had the full array of skills. He had both feet, catching, like vision, could he could hit off the ground with both feet, hit sidelines outside of the boot, you know, he could do he could do everything, you know. So mm, he was just he was brilliant to watch. How do you reflect now on the league this year going into the 2021 Championship? I mean, you won one, drew one and lost one in Division 1 North against Tyrone Armagh, or sorry, Donegal Armagh and Monaghan. Then obviously there was the performance against Kerry when they you know, put a big scoreline on you. But how do you reflect on the league? And does it matter all that much going into the Championship? Yeah, well, uh, I, th I think it does because at the end of the day, that league was, it was a shortened league and it increased the stakes of every game you know like it was every game was nearly a dirt day and we just we just had to go out and try and win as many as we could and we like our our main objective at the start was just you know get safety in division one and then we'll go from there and like we, we managed to do that and then obviously the the carry game was a massive disappointment but you know, like we 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 got to work straight away on it this last few weeks, and we've started learning as much as we can. And I guess that's, you know, if you can take any positive from that, at least we we've learned a lot. You know, mm -hmm. and is it a case that like some people would suggest that Fergal and Brian are still just trying to bring their style into throwing, obviously so long under Mickey Hart, but maybe there will be a few things, a few bugs have to be ironed out as you develop your system. Yeah, well, that's it. Fergal and Brian are trying to change the style of play a wee bit, uh, for sure. And it's going to be very difficult for them because, like, a lot of the players who have been there under previous management, that like, like they've been playing a very defensive style and uh, maybe not a very risk averse style. You know, they weren't they weren't really 
trying to take risks or move it forward as quickly as as the likes of Kerry are doing now. But uh, it's it's gonna it's gonna take time for it to work. But ho- hopefully we can get things flowing soon enough. Yeah, it's an interesting tie that you've got coming up with Kevin on July tenth in the Ulster Football Championship. They come in as provincial champions, and yet at the same time they're just after getting relegated to Division Four. So it must be a strange one where maybe you don't know fully where you're at, but probably Kevin are in the same boat. Yeah, I know. That's it. Kevin have had uh, they've had a very mixed up year with with getting relegated and also winning Ulster Championship. But uh, I think I think it just goes to show that the. the the championship and especially knockout football it's a, it's a different animal and it's it's all on the day and calvin have a fantastic group of players and they have the experience now of winning that ulster championship so that's going to stand to them in that game you know it's yeah. this really is going to be a tough tough task for us in the first round yeah and the fact that it's do or die just knockout game as well I expect it to be a bit of a classic with uh, nothing left in the dressing room yeah that's it you know like it's you can never predict how these games are going to go before the start. Like it could, it could turn into one of these real, like I talked about, our county final, a real cagey affair, or it could go out and it could be both teams could really go at it and play great football, and it could be, it could be a shootout. You just, you just never know. But like it's, it's going to be a tight game, and it's going to come down to fine margins. We've just got to make sure we're prepared the best we can be, which is what we're trying to do over these next couple of weeks. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Paul, and best of luck for the championship. No bother, Shane. Thank you.